Hey gang, Professor McElroy here. It's a uh, advertising design class uh, and we're starting our October section. Uh, first and foremost, I hope everyone is safe and sound. Uh, if you live in Southwest Florida and you have, uh, hopefully if you have hurricane shutters, you've put them up by now. And if you're in one of the evacuation areas, uh, you found a, a safe place to go. Uh, I posted the pre-lecture recording from the previous session uh, that I taught this class, uh, going over the basics of Photoshop and kind of getting the class started. Uh, I think the lecture is about an hour and 45 minutes or so, and I posted that here in our announcement section, uh, and I thought I would come on this evening and just do kind of a recap, kind of highlight the key aspects of the course, and kind of kick the class off so that we can kind of get this thing started. Uh, today's a good day because it's pre-storm. I actually do have a class tomorrow night as well. Uh, and I'm worrying, a little more worried that I might not have internet to do that one from my home office, but we'll kind of see how it goes. So, but uh, family, uh, being safe is the most important thing. Uh, we'll get the material here over the next uh, four weeks. Not too worried about that, but uh, so let's get started here uh, with the advertising design class. <clears throat> this class is all about Photoshop. Uh, it's all about image manipulation. It's all about uh, uh, manipulating, editing, copying, pasting, manipulating pixels, and working in a world that is pixel or resolution based. Uh, so we'll be doing everything in here will be photographically manipulated that we'll be doing image edits, blending, combining, modifying, <clears throat> and manipulating uh, both images and layers in Photoshop. Uh, there's no previous Photoshop experience needed. Uh, we're gonna kind of go over the basics, <clears throat> talk about the program. I'll open up a program or two, uh, an image or two, uh, just to go over just very briefly some of the introductory tools and skills. But like I said, I did uh, about a two hour, just under two hour lecture uh, with the <clears throat> session I taught just a few months ago. And I posted that as a pre-lecture. And so we'll be able to both watch the pre-lecture and kind of cover the basics here for week one. Uh, and we'll be off to a good start for the course. I took a look at the uh, cohort for this class. And I noticed uh, just about all of you have had a section with me before, so I feel comfortable that we'll kind of hit the ground running uh, and we'll meet the outcomes and learn the basic skills of Photoshop. <clears throat> Those of you that are new, just know that this is a TEC section, so it's both an online synchronous and asynchronous uh, delivery modality, meaning you can watch it live or you can watch it recorded. I share my desktop with Zoom with the link and the password provided in the Zoom link over here. Uh, and you do have the option as a student to be in the lab uh, with the live lecture. Unfortunately, uh, the next few days, Hodges is closed due to the hurricane. Uh, so everything's uh, kind of coming out of my home office here, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a good time playing in Photoshop for the next four weeks. So welcome to advertising design class. Uh, just know that I like to <clears throat> use the announcement section kind of as my bulk email platform <clears throat> because Canvas doesn't do a great job at providing a tool for uh, kind of blast emailing to the entire class cohort. Uh, so I'll be posting a few things a week in the announcement section. So hopefully this is your only course for the month and you can be actively engaged in the content both playing with the software, uh, learning the tools, and also kind of keeping track of the announcements as I post them. I try to, you know, I try to be really active in the announcement section. And we do have discussion boards as well, each, each mo uh, module each week, <clears throat> and that'll allow for a little uh, student to student interaction. And it will also give me an opportunity to throw some comments in there as well to keep the dialogue going. Uh, so just know that this is, uh, multi, multiple or multi-modality format technology enhanced coursework, TEC, which the School of Technology uses as its primary delivery modality. So online, 
uh, synchronous, asynchronous in the classroom, you know, any way that you kind of work best. The cohorts will have students from literally all around the globe. Uh, so sometimes I may email you and say, hey, exactly where are you? <clears throat> so I know kind of when you might submit and when is the best time to send an email or comment or critique something that you're submitting during the coursework. So we'll do our very best to keep you engaged. I mean, Photoshop's a great program, so you should enjoy playing around in this program uh, as we kind of learn pixel manipulation. So know that this is the announcement section. Uh, and this is how Canvas is laid out for all of the FF, FSOT courses. So you'll notice one, two, three, four, five, six. I've already had six announcements this week. Uh, some of two of them are storm related, and one is a pre lecture post. But I do like to post inspiration. I like to I like to kind of do little anecdotal things inside the announcement section. Uh, so I'll be using that as our primary platform. Syllabus is pretty standard. Uh, it's the standard Hodges template. It has uh, my contact information. <clears throat> Email is by far the best way to reach me because it's uh, I have multiple Apple devices and I have the email on all of those. So if you really need something, email is the best. And if I'm not in class, uh, I, I'm pretty quick uh, as other hopefully students in the cohort will you know, attest to is that I try to be really good about it because if it's important to you, it's, it's important to me. Because if you have a question, sometimes you might be stuck on that particular question until we uh, until I answer it so or help you. So I want to make sure that uh, as responsive as possible. So email is definitely the best way to get through to me when you're trying to reach out with a question concern, just want to talk about something, uh, shoot me a quick email. All right, that brings us over uh, to learning module one. Uh, I did notice one or two of you in the cohort are potentially new to the Hodges format. Uh, so just know that this uh, little link right here is how you access your digital PDF. It opens up a digital bookshelf uh, that will have our uh, Photoshop books in it. I have to say that the, uh, the uh, the Photoshop uh, tricks book we're using for this course is awesome. It's all real world applicable Photoshop tricks. They're very easy, I think, to understand in the step-by-step -step portion of the chapters. Uh, all of your student files are attached right here uh, in the student image file link. So you can download the zip file that has all of our chapter images in it. All those images are high resolution. They're all professionally shot. They're re all real world applicable. So I really love how this book does a really great job at uh, showing you some tricks of Photoshop with some very basic skills. Uh, you don't need to know a lot in order to do them. Uh, for this class, you'll be submitting the chapter assignments to me at the end of the chapters. So you'll be opening up your digital book. You'll be... Uh, You'll be uh, downloading the student files here, and then we'll be building both uh, in-book projects and some out-of-book projects. So if I scroll right down here to learning module one, you're gonna notice that we have three chapter assignments from your book, three very basic image blending, professional commercial effects is what they call it, uh, tricks and techniques for Photoshop. Book is very clear, very good step-by-step -step process. You can, you can upload for me via these links, either the PSD file that you created doing the effects, commercial effects for our first three chapters, or you can save it as an Adobe Photoshop PDF, which will flatten it and make the file a little bit smaller for upload uh, if you need to do that based on internet connection. So this week we'll be covering the first three chapters, one project each chapter inside of your book, and we'll be doing a little out of book poster design. And you may notice that in the announcement section, I actually posted uh, some travel poster inspirations because your out of book project is to create a travel poster, blending images together from a city, uh, a country, somewhere that you've either traveled to or would love to go to. 
in order to show us some kind of Photoshop tricks and techniques you've learned from the first three chapter assignments in your book. And as I get submissions, I'll be sharing those in the announcement section to inspire based on kind of what the cohort is doing and what they're creating. Uh, so we'll be using that kind of as our format as well. So now that we have uh, the idea of accessing our ebook and downloading our chapter files uh, and knowing that we have our first three book projects and our Allo book project. My pre-lecture covers some of the basic skills from the first three chapter projects uh, for this learning module one. Also notice that there is a topic share in learning module one, which means if you find something cool that is Photoshop related, you can post it in our discussion forum for this week and you can share it with your classmates. I think peer-to-peer uh, -peer is really important learning and doing it online, I think is even more important because we live in a day and age where you can literally work from anywhere. And designers is a unique position where many of them now are working from anywhere. Companies are just looking for the designers that fit their needs and they're willing to accept that that person may not live in the city, the state or the country uh, that they currently have their, uh, their, their office or their corporate headquarters in. So just know this is a really great field for literally working from anywhere. And so we have to be, a, we have to be adapt, adaptive to that environment. And so we need to, as an institution, a university, teach you how to interact in a virtual environment or an online environment. Hence the reason TEC is Zoom-based because uh, marketing teams, design teams, they may meet virtually because members of the team are all around the state, the country, or the world. So get comfortable with the concept of a Zoom meeting, uh, which is what we're doing for class, and also interacting in an online format. Uh, whether you're working for a company and you have a shared drive with a shared document that you're working on, or you might have just a discussion or a post board where team mem members can chat, uh, all of those things done virtually. And so I think Canvas and Zoom together do a really good job of interacting in a virtual environment where we can teach it that way. You can get comfortable with it. So if that dream job arises, uh, that you feel comfortable in this environment. So hopefully over the course of your tenure at Hodges, you get comfortable in the TEC format and you learn to love it if you don't, or some of you might already love it because you already read, already either work in an environment where some parts of the job are remote, or maybe just personally you use it because you have family or friends or someone around the you know, city, state, country, uh, world that you want to interact with. Uh, so I, hopefully you get comfortable with the TEC format and just know that it is synchronous, asynchronous and residential. So it has all of those options kind of floating around. All right. So that brings us to uh, Adobe Photoshop. I do want to spend a few minutes, even though I did already post a pre-lecture of kind of what Photoshop looks like uh, and kind of the basic skills of what we do in Photoshop on a day-to-day -day basis as a designer. Uh, it's an in-depth lecture of almost two hours, so I'm not too worried uh, if you watch that. Remember, there is a password attached to the link uh, so that you can watch the lecture uh, web-based in your browser window. So you can use a, a tablet, a phone, your computer, whatever. It is uh, browser-based and it's uploaded to the cloud for Zoom. So you can literally watch it or listen to it uh, anywhere you are at any time during a lunch break or when you're out about town uh, and you can watch it over and over again. So if there's something specific that you're not sure about, uh, you always have the ability to go back and watch it over and over again. So uh, I'm just gonna spend a couple of minutes talking about pixels, kind of how they work and that sort of thing. So uh, any of you that have had uh, a class with me before knows that there's a bunch of kind of freebie uh, educational based online resources for things like photographs and vector graphics and videos and audio clips uh, and that sort of thing that we can use 
in high quality professional levels of output so we can create the best projects that we can possibly create. So I'm gonna go out to one of those resources, which is called pexels.com. If you've never been exposed to it before, it's a really awesome environment for free high quality stock imagery. Of course, we're using them for educational resources. So we can use anything that we grab out there that's high quality because we're not building it for a client or professional application. We're building it for educational. So we're building portfolio pieces to showcase skills that we've learned uh, versus pre producing something that is for, for pay or for, or for value. So. Let's get in here. Uh, and I thought uh, maybe fall, fall landscapes. Let's do like fall landscapes. We're at that time of the season where maybe we can find uh, a nice picture that we can kind of build some things on. So let's just see what we have down here uh, for fall landscapes. Boy, there are some great fall images here. Let's just see what we have. So let's, I wanna do portrait cause we're kind of doing a, a eight and a half by 11, a portrait image. So I wanna kind of stay in the portrait format so that we can kind of scale things proportionately to the output of what we're creating. And so let's see here, see what we have in the portrait. So let's just download this one. I'm going to dump this to my desktop. Here it is. We'll dump that over there. And let's grab like fall leaves. See if we can find like a fall leaf image that we might be able to extract a fall leaf that we can have flying kind of drifting or dropping out of the sky in our image. So I'm just looking for a fall leaf that's kind of like isolated to make it easier to kind of pull out of, actually, this is a pretty good image because this leaf right here is on kind of a solid background, which makes it a little bit easier to extract. So I've got a couple of image over here downloading. Uh, and then let's do something like uh, Scarecrow. See if we can find a scarecrow that we could just cut out and maybe put in the front of our image here a little bit. Let's download this guy. All right, I think that's all we need for now. So I'm just gonna use my space bar real quick. I'm on a Mac just to kind of show you the images and they're gonna be really good quality. So let's start with the background because I'm gonna open this up and kind of show you a few things about Photoshop and what makes it such a great tool for kind of image manipulation. So let's go into image, image size. And you can see that, let's switch this over to inches. So this is 52 inches by 78 inches. It's a really big image and it's only 17, which is low resolution. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, take this thing. So let's get in here. Uh, resample this down to 12 by 18. So we're just going to resample this image down, but with a higher resolution, right? The, the photographer shot it like really large, 50 inches by 70 some inches at low resolution, knowing that they could sample the size down but bump the pixel resolution of pixel density up because it has the pixels already there, right? You can't really duplicate pixels, like replicate pixels that aren't there to increase resolution, but you can take something that's really large, that's slightly lower resolution and sample it down in size, but increase the resolution because the pixels are already there. Uh, so just imagine all you're doing is scaling down the image to enhance the pixels because the pixel density is already there, okay? And so now that we have this 12 by 18, I'm gonna go in and zoom in 
just so that we all are kind of on the same playing field. And you're gonna notice that 3,200 is what I zoomed into, these little squares of color. These little squares of color are called pixels. And that's what we're in essence selecting, modifying, editing, copying, pasting, manipulating uh, to create the effect that we want. That we're basing our design here on a, a level of pixel density. Unlike Illustrator, where it's a solid fill and stroke, it's a shape that's fully scalable. It's a vector, what we call a vector graphic. Uh, that can be the size of the stamp or the size of a billboard. Photoshop is tied to resolution. So you need to have really high resolution, high quality images to manipulate because you're printing, you're in essence exporting printing to 100% final output. So if you want something to be printed very largely at a high quality, you need to have a large high resolution image. You can't take an image that's eight by 10 and what's called 72 DPI dots per inch, these little squares of color and make it 12 by 18, 300 dots per inch. Because imagine when you scale that image up, all it's doing is duplicating the colors from the little pixels and adding extra ones around it. So it's taking this little shade of kind of this brown color and it's just adding it to here, 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 and adding it to here, which means this next square of color, which is slightly different, it's adding a series of that color around it. So imagine this is like tiered, what we call stepped or tiered. So the shades of this color are changing in each pixel. Imagine if you had to add extra pixels of the same color next to it, it gets, and you've seen it before, I'm sure, it makes images look blurry. The reason they look blurry is because the pixel density of that image was very low. And the person, the designer, was trying to make it large and high resolution, but the pixel detail wasn't available. So what Photoshop has to do is it has to replicate the pixels around itself, double them up in order to stretch the resolution from 72 to 150 or 300, depending on what your output is. And just know that a print high quality output is 300 of those little dots per inch. So you can see where the problem is. You can't take 72 squares of color in an inch and make it 300 squares of color in an inch because it has to duplicate the pixels. When it duplicates the pixels, it makes the image blurry and that's what's happening. So we're gonna work in an environment where everything is high resolution. Your photos from your chapter assignments are professional high resolution photographs. If you're gonna take something uh, to play around with, you need to go to a site like pexels.com that gives free high resolution, high quality images so that you have the pixel density you need in order to make these blends, these uh, effects, these selections, these copies and pasting of the squares of color. And know if you have something really high quality and you're trying to copy in something that's very low quality, be aware that that thing that you're copying in is gonna shrink way down in size in order for it to replicate the higher density of pixels. So if you take something from something that's only 72 DPI and you cut out, let's say a leaf, a pumpkin, uh, you're doing something for a fall scene and you try to copy that leaf into a background that's 300 DPI, a leaf that was originally, let's say, three inches by five inches, and you're copying it into a 12 by 18 high resolution image, that little leaf is going to scale way down under an inch. So it's really going to shrink down. So when you're copying and pasting from one photograph to another, it's going to take the properties of the thing you're importing into. So just know if you're going low resolution to high, the image that you've cut out, you've copied, you've pasted, that sort of thing to bring into Photoshop is going to shrink way down. But think about the opposite. If you take a really high resolution image and you cut something out of it and you copy and paste it into a really low resolution image, then it's gonna come in really huge because it has all those extra pixels, 300 of them per inch, that are being copied into a document that's only 72 little squares of color per inch. So just know that's kind of how resolution works, how images work inside a Photoshop world. 
in an ideal world, and hopefully in this world we're working in this uh, month, we're dealing with only high resolution images. And you can see them in this image. So I'm gonna do a very simple selection of all of the pixels in this image. You're gonna see this little selection box around the edges that's lovingly known as marching ants. So these little marching ants around the edge just means that I have selected all of the pixels inside of this document by doing select all. And I'm gonna do edit copy, which means it's gonna copy all of the pixels I've selected inside of this box. And then I'm gonna go over to my new document. And I'm gonna do edit paste. And you're going to notice that that image is going to paste into the document that is only eight and a half by 11. And remember, when I resampled that background, it was 12 by 18. So you'll notice that this image gets what's called cropped. The edge of it is cropped. So you don't see the whole image because the image is bigger than the document. And you're going to notice one of the really important aspects of Photoshop. When you copy and paste or bring images together into a document, each kind of process you do creates a new layer. So I'm going to do a fall scene. And so this layer now is my fall scene. And you'll notice whenever you open up a new document in Photoshop, your region right off the bat, you have a, a background uh, that's typically white, a canvas that's white, and it's locked. And it's kind of the grounding area that you import everything into, you copy and paste into. So you'll notice the fall scene has come on top of my background layer. Now, we're going to take a look at just the first few tools up the top of the Photoshop toolbar uh, this week as we kind of baby step into what is Photoshop and how does it work in ad design. Uh, all of these are covered in your chapter assignments as it steps you through some very basic processes. But I want to make sure that we have the selection tools kind of down as you navigate through the first three chapters in your book. All right, now the very first tool is called the move tool or the selection tool. And you'll notice if I have the fall scene layer selected over here in my layer palette, I can actually click and drag this thing around. You'll notice when I move it off the edge, you can see my background there. When I move it off this edge, you can see my background there, right? So there is white behind it. And you'll notice as I move it, it's being cropped inside of this kind of makeshift window, which is the document. And you'll also notice that the image goes all the way to the edge of my document right now. That's what's called a full bleed. When the image goes all the way to the edge of your document, it's called a full bleed. And full bleeds are really important because if you're laying out a poster or an advertisement or you're making a brochure or a menu or anything that's print-based and you want the image to go all the way to the edge so that when the printer cuts your document for its final output, it has color all the way to the edge and actually know that you should add one eighth inch, 0.125 to the inches to the edge of the document if you're actually gonna print out a full bleed because the printer is gonna print a bunch of these all stacked together and he's gonna use a cutter to cut the edges. And if you know anything about paper, when you stack a bunch of paper on top of itself and you cut the edge of it, the paper bows or bends. So you have to have a 0.125 bleed on the end of your document in order for the printer to be able to cut it. And every image that they cut, there isn't any white on the edge. If you tried to print this to the exact size and cut it at a printer as the paper bowed or bent, the images on the bottom of the stack would have white on the edges of, this, edges of the document, which is a miscut. So if I wanted to go in here and adjust the canvas size, I could add a 0.125. So we're going to do 625 and we're going to do 11.125. So if I was doing this for print, that is how my document would be set up. I would actually set it up already for the bleed, knowing that it was going to be cut or cropped when the final product was produced. And you'll also notice it expanded the edges, but the image is still a full bleed. Remember, the image is still a full bleed because it's going all the way past the edges. You'll also notice 
that the edge of my image adjustment is orange now, my canvas, because these two little squares here on the edge of the toolbar, this is called your foreground, and this is called your background. So you'll notice my background is orange right now, and my foreground is white. So the reason that edge has a little bit of orange is because when I expanded my canvas, it added extra background to the edge. So if I hit what's called a toggle switch and I switch that, and I'm actually gonna do a command Z. So I undo my image size. So I'm just gonna redo it a couple of times. So you see undo canvas size and it makes it smaller. Now watch when I do image canvas size now and make it 0.625 and 11.125. All right, so now watch when I move. See how it's white on the edges? It's because my background over here is set to white. It didn't matter if it was orange because remember this is a full bleed and the image is gonna cover that. So you'll never know what's behind it is a different color because it bleeds all the way to the edge and they're just gonna cut it at the printer. So you're never going to see that edge. But for best practice, it's good when you do an image canvas adjustment that you keep this little swatch, which is called the background color, the same as your actual page, artboard, canvas, document, whatever term you want to use for the file that you're working on. Now, uh, I'm going to do the first thing in Photoshop, which is based on the properties menu up here. So you may or may not know, but every time I change a tool in the toolbar, the properties menu at the top is changing. So the properties are up here are specific to the document on this layer for this particular tool. So the move tool. And so I wanna actually change the size of the image. See how it's really huge? When I check the show transform controls, this is the bounding box. The bounding box is really big. It's really big because uh, it's showing you how big the image is. And you're gonna notice, I'm gonna take the edge of this bounding box. And you see if I move off the edge, it allows me to scale in and scale out. And if I move a little bit further, it allows me to rotate only this layer only the object or image on that layer. Uh, I don't wanna make it bigger, right? That's, that's a no-no in Photoshop. Like if I click on this and drag it out this way, it's gonna make that layer bigger, the image on it. And remember, you can't really scale up in Photoshop because any upward of pixel scaling means duplicating of pixels, which means softening or blurring the image. Uh, there are some tricks around that if you're only scaling it up, say 10%, uh, but as a best practice learning Photoshop, do not scale up, only scale down. I'm gonna grab the corner here and I'm gonna hold down shift. So you can see, I can actually drag this. See how I'm squishing that? You don't want to squish it. If I hold down option, see how I can't squish it? it's scaling it from the center proportionately. So make sure that you're always holding down the option key to scale proportionately. And I'm gonna just move this over and you're gonna notice, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna scale this up so it's full bleed, but it's a little bit more uh, to proportion of the size of the image. And once I have it the way I want it, I'm gonna hit enter. And you're gonna notice now, if I turn off show transform controls, the bounding box goes away, but my image is still a full bleed, but look how close it is now. It's not nearly as big outside of the art border canvas area. So now I get more of the background, right? I get more of the image inside of that. It's really good to have images that are way too large for the final output. So you have the ability to scale them down, but you can scale them down to any percentage based on the level of crop that you want in the image on the layer that you're using here in Photoshop. So now we have that image uh, scaled down to the background. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna close the image that I opened to create the background. And before I go any further, I'm gonna name my file. So I'm just gonna save it to my computer on the desktop. And I'm gonna name this uh, add design underscore lecture one. And I'm gonna dump it onto my desktop. 
And I'm going to save it there. And you'll notice that it saves as a .psd file with the layers box checked. That's really important because that means it's going to save it as its source file or what's called its raw file. And it's going to save it with the layer detail already saved into it. So you need that. You need the source file and you need the layer attributes because if you ever need to go back in and make any modifications, you want to make sure that you have the original detail uh, layers so that you can go in and make any modifications that you need to make. If it's flat, what's called flattened, which means that layers aren't selected to be saved, then if I copy and make a leaf on the top of here, it's going to be blended into the background. It'll be flattened in. So there'll only be one layer over here instead of multiple layers. Well, imagine kind of like putting the leaf on top of the image and then ironing that leaf on the pixels under the leaf. So let's say the false seam layer. Once that's flattened, all the pixels under the leaf disappear because the leaf becomes the pixels on that layer. You want to make sure you always save the layers so you have access to the pixels as you're manipulating the image. OK, so let's go in here and open our leaf file just so we can talk a little bit about the selection tools. Now I'm going to go up to image image size just so we can see how big this thing is. It is enormous. See, it's 31 inches by 50 inches. It is low resolution. So if we change that to our output resolution, which is 300 DPI, you'll notice it goes to seven and a half inches by 12. But you'll notice in Photoshop, when you do that, it doesn't do anything to your view area because all it's doing is it resampling it down to a higher resolution. So let's zoom in here. I'm gonna use the space bar so I can pan my image. That's a short key that's really important to know. The space bar changes your move tool into a grabber hand. And so you can pan around the image. So that way you can keep it on the move tool if you need to, but you can zoom in and pan around. Also no command plus and command minus. Command plus is how you zoom in. Command minus is how you zoom out. So I can do a lot of things in Photoshop just using one tool as my selected tool because there's lots of shortcuts for being able to do things around the document to kind of move my eye or my selection area without having to change my tool to make those modifications happen. So let's zoom in. Uh, and we're going to talk about a, could, a couple of the selection tools primarily these top three right here. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is talk about the shape selection tool. Remember that when I did uh, select all in that original background image, it select all of the pixels inside of that image for me to do edit, copy, and edit, paste. But I could have also done it with my rectangular marquee tool. So if I click my mouse and drag, I'm dragging that box with those marching ants around the area of the image I want selected. This is a what's called a shape selection tool. And you'll notice the ants are kind of marching around it. And I have, in essence, selected the pixels only inside of this box. That's really important to understand. Even though you can see stuff over here, I don't have it selected with my rectangular marquee tool. So I'm going to do edit copy. And then I'm going to go into my document and do edit paste so you can see what happens. So now I'm going to switch back to my move tool. You'll notice that the leaf was copied and pasted in at high resolution based on the tool I used to select it. So, wow, the rectangular marquee tool would be a great selection tool if I needed to select something that was in a box, a rectangle or a square. I don't have to use any other tool because it's a really easy tool to drag to select the pixel area. And you'll also notice that when I did edit and open the doc, this document back up and did paste, it added a new layer number one, which I'm going to call leaf box, just so that we know the process we're doing for each of the selection tools. And you'll notice this little eyeball over here lets me turn on and turn off the ability to see that layer. But that's really important because you need to know that underneath this box, there is still the background, which means all the pixels are still there. So if I do something on this layer I don't like, it doesn't affect what's underneath it. That's the hardest part of Photoshop is understanding that layers stack up as you copy, paste, 
manipulate, duplicate layers, bring in new objects. And when you're in a document that has multiple layers, you're only manipulating, selecting, moving, copying, pasting, editing, applying an effect or a style to the layer that you're on. See, the background is its own layer. The leaf is its own layer. So many times students will try to select something and they're like, I'm gonna copy what's in that background scene and I'm gonna paste it to make it a new thing, a new layer in my document, but they're in the wrong layer selected in order to do that. I can't copy what's on the fall scene if I have the leaf box scene selected. If I wanna copy what's on the fall scene, I have to select the fall scene to edit, copy and edit paste. And now you're going to notice that I have a new layer number one and watch. It's back there. It's what I copied from the fall scene layer, even though I drew my box over the leaf box. I actually selected the pixels behind that. I selected whatever the pixels were on the layer I had selected. So I'm going to trash that because I don't need it. And so, and I'm going to hide this layer because that's not exactly the kind of leaf I want to import in. But just like the, so I'm going to do select, deselect, which is command D, or you can actually tap your cursor outside of the shape you drew once and it will deselect it. Uh, and I could do that with a circle tool also. And if I hold down shift, I can draw a perfect circle. So if I do that, I can move this so that I can get the right selection. And I'm going to do edit, copy. And I'm going to go over here and do edit, paste. And now you're going to notice that the leaf was copied in. Mm, but look, it's kind of blurry on the edge of that document. Let me show you what happens. So I'm going to delete that layer. So I'm going to go back over here. You see this little thing called the feather. The feather means a blurring or a blending of the edges. The higher that PX or pixel number, 30 pixels of the edge of that shape are going to be blurred or blended. If I make that zero, so I'm gonna make it zero. Now I'm gonna do copy, command C and command V. Oop. Let's make sure it's copied. Let's deselect that for a minute. Make sure this is set to zero. And there you go. And there it is with a firm edge, not a feathered edge. So you can see what the power of the feather can be if you're blending. Let's see if you're cutting out a person and they have wavy hair. You're gonna wanna feather the edge of the cut out or the thing you're copying and pasting so that it blends the kind of feathers the hair in from one image into another. So let's do that. We'll delete that. So now uh, the selection tools are really easy ways to select. Uh, now we're going to get into what's called the lasso tool or a free form selection tool. So there are three lasso tools. One is the standard free forming lasso. One is what's called a polygon lasso, which means you're drawing a straight line to create a shape to select, which is great for a house, something that has straight vertical and diagonal lines to it. Polygon lasso works great for the free forming lasso or the basic lasso tool is good for something that isn't so straight or has angles or edges to it. And the magnetic lasso allows you to select an object based on its colors. So like if something has a distinct color different from its background, you can use the magnetic lasso tool to select it pretty easily. So you'll notice if I just have the regular lasso tool and I'm just using my mouse to draw. I'm just gonna do a quick kind of using my mouse. And you'll notice it's tough to follow the edge of this leaf using my mouse in a free forming process. I'm just gonna go as quickly as I can just to show you the lasso tool. Take this out. 
just for the sake of it, I'm gonna trace that stem a little bit. Now you'll notice the marching ants, but watch when I zoom in. I didn't do a great job, but if I hold down my shift key with the lasso tool, you see the plus key? I could go in and circle the areas that I didn't do very well. Oh, but you know what? I did too much there. If I hold down the option key, I can remove the areas of the pixels. Shift adds, option removes. So if I do shift again, go along the edge of here. And you'll notice I'm going from the edge in. And that's kind of how the selection tool works when I'm circling something to add to the selection. So I'm just going to really quickly just go along the edge of this thing a little bit so you can see how it works. So if I zoom out, oh, I'm getting better at that. But let's just say I did a really good job of selecting that. And I'm going to do edit copy. And I'm going to go over here and do edit paste. And there is my leaf. Leaf lasso. Obviously, I didn't do a great job on the stem, but if I use my short show transform controls, I could rotate this leaf. I could scale this leaf down, holding option key. And I'm going to hit return or enter to apply my transform. There it is, I'm gonna turn off my box so it looks a little more seamless in my document. So you can see it right there. And I could duplicate that layer. I can click on it and hold my mouse down and add the plus. And now you're gonna see, I can duplicate the leaf over and over again. And they're starting to fall from the sky. And you'll notice that it keeps the name. It just makes a copy of it, which is perfectly fine. So let's go back to the leaf here, because I just want to show you the other lasso tools. So let's do select, deselect, so you can see. This works on straight lines. So you click your mouse, let go, click your mouse, let go. So like I said, if you were doing something with straight lines, actually, this leaf wouldn't be bad if I zoomed in because it's got a lot of jagged edges to it. So the magnetic, magnetic lasso tool might work really well for this because it is kind of one of those jagged, looks like it might be like an old maple leaf or something. So I'm going to quickly use the lasso tool to select this thing. Just so that you can see the polygon tool and how it works. I actually don't have to go all the way to the edge of the leaf as long as I stay inside of it to get the effect that I wanted. Now, I didn't do that to start out with, so I didn't do a great job at that. But I could have gone and followed the shape of this. And you'll notice when I get back to where I started, the lasso tool has a little white circle. If I click on that, it means, do you want to close or finish the selection, which I do. And I'm going to do edit copy. I'm going to do edit paste. And now you'll notice, look how good this stem is. It's much better. And actually the leaf is pretty good too, because I made it jagged. I just stayed inside the shape of the leaf. Lasso uh, poly. All right, so let's show the last of the tools. So let's do select, deselect, and let's do the magnetic lasso. Now, the way the magnetic lasso works is it's trying to follow where the colors change in the object you're trying to select. So you see how it kind of knows the edge of the pixels and it follows along the edge. This is a really great tool if you have a big transition between uh, foreground and background. So the object's like sitting on a solid background of some kind. And wherever you want to make sure that it follows, you can just click your mouse button and it'll add what's called a node, these little squares to your selection area. 
So I'm just gonna quickly go around using the magnetic just so that you can see how it works. Spacebar, so I can move this. I could literally just drag this thing very free forming around the edge of this leaf. And as long as I stay on the inside of it, it's gonna do the best it can to select this edge. And so I'm gonna hold down the space bar. The stem is gonna be a little bit trickier because it's skinny. You see how it tries to snap to the edge, but it's really skinny. The leaf edge is really skinny. And so because I didn't do a great job, I'm gonna zoom in, hold down shift and try to select the area I missed. So there it is. And so now I'm gonna do edit copy, command C, edit paste, and you'll notice this leaf. Wow, this one's pretty good too. That one's actually better with the polygon because you're able to go inside the shape and create all those sharp edges. Leaf lasso, magnetic. All right, so let's do select, deselect. And we're going to look at the last tool, which is the magic wand tool. Now, the magic wand tool tries to work by selecting a range of pixel colors based on what's called the tolerance is selected. How much around that range of color when your wand taps on one pixel of color will be included inside the selection area. So watch it, 20. If I just click my mouse, it grabs all those shades. If I hold down shift, just keep holding down shift and clicking inside this leaf, it will try to select all of the colors inside that leaf. So let's do deselect. Let's change that to 40, enter, and look at how many more colors it added because I made the tolerance higher. And we're actually gonna be able to get pretty good selection of this leaf based on that. And I just held down shift, right? Just to make sure it adds any of those colors. But you'll notice, look here, Hold down option, see if I can oh, deselect that area inside there. The problem is it's really close to the color of the stem. So once I click on the stem, it re-adds that. But remember, you can always go back with your regular selection tool or some other selection tool. Hold down option and deselect. So you don't have to use one selection tool for every part of the process. I bounce back and forth between the different tools I'm using based on the object I'm trying to select. So if I copy that and do uh, go into here and edit paste, there's my next one. And that one's pretty good, actually. It's equally as good as the polygon. All right, so let's do select, deselect, because I wanna show that you can use the magic wand tool and you can also use it to do select subjects. That was one part of the Photoshop that they've added. It's kind of like a smart selection tool. This one's gonna be really tricky because the leaf isn't the only object inside of this document. So watch what happens when it tries to do select subject. It'll be interesting to see which subject it tries to pick. It looks like it tried to pick these coasters and the, and the coffee cup as the object. It doesn't understand which object you're trying to select. So let's see if it does, if it's just the scarecrow. So let's go back to our magic wand. Let's do select subject. And let's see if it knows to try to select just the scarecrow. Oh, it did a pretty good job. So let's zoom in and use my space bar. And you'll notice it did a pretty good job, but I'm gonna hold down option and deselect the shoulder that it didn't select. I'm gonna hold down shift and add that edge of the bucket, hold down option, remove that edge of the bucket. Like it did a pretty good job. It was a little confused at some of the areas because the colors bleed into themselves. Circle that, use my space bar. How did it do with the rest of the stuff? Looks like it missed a few, so I'm just gonna hold down shift and option and clean up this selection.
I don't want to add the leaf, but I do want to add this little arm here. Space bar. Let's see what we got going on here. So we can't do that stick really. This one's a little tricky because this pole came into the leg area. So let's just circle that away. Mm. This little leaf area, let's remove that. All right, that's a pretty good selection area. So we're gonna do edit copy, edit paste. Here's our little scarecrow dude. And look how big he is. He's big because it was high resolution. We can move him down here. And now you'll see the scarecrow. scarecrow. All right, so we can close these now because I've imported them into my finished document. So this is the document I want to save. And you'll notice that it saves as a PSD file, but I also can save it as a PDF file. So I want to make sure that you know these are two ways to submit that are absolutely acceptable. So if I do Photoshop PDF, I can turn the layers off and I can save it. And so watch the difference in the file size. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm actually going to change this size of this from just high quality to press quality. Click Save. And it's just telling me that it's going to remove some of the things I've done, which is layer details, by saving it as a PDF, a flattened PDF. And so now let's just take a look at the file difference. Let's get the info on the PSD file. All right, 91 megs. Let's get a info on the PDF file. 31 megs, it cut it in a third. So just know by saving your Photoshop file, depending on the size and the resolution of what we're working in, uh, you can literally cut the file size in a third and still keep it press quality. If I went to smallest file size, so file, save as, and I'm gonna name it, uh, Small Photoshop PDF, turn off the layers and change this to smallest file size and watch what happens. Know that when you make it full, smallest file size, it's going to compress the pixel density a little bit. 300K. So this is in essence a lower resolution version or flattened resolution version to the PSD, which is full detail, high resolution. You can see the difference of it when I do the thumbnail. So, all right, gang, uh, I'm gonna end the lecture one uh, follow-up kind of kickoff lecture. We have the pre-lecture and now the hour long getting to know Photoshop lecture. And these will be a combo lecture for week one. Uh, everyone stay safe, stay well. Uh, hopefully this hurricane just kind of wiggles off and, uh, and doesn't affect us here in Southwest Florida. Uh, not that you wish it upon anyone else, but it would be nice if it just kind of kept wiggling up the golf there. Uh, so I'll see you guys next week, week two. Uh, Tuesday night, 6.30. It'll be live Zoom, it'll be recorded Zoom, and it will be in the classroom, uh, all three modalities. Uh, and I look forward to you guys kind of dipping your toes into Photoshop with your first three book chapters. When you're done saving your files, you will click on the submit button inside of your project submission. And if I click on it, mine actually says edit and publish. Yours will say uh, submit because I'm the teacher, mine says that I can edit and publish my file, but yours will say submit. And so for any of you that haven't had a Canvas course before, you click on the project link, 
that you're looking to submit your assignment into. And then you click on the submit button and it will allow you to select your PSD file or your PDF file for this particular class and you can upload it. Know that when you upload it, I'll be grading it and adding a comment to your score. That is the critique for your project. You're always willing to go back and make an edit and make one additional submission. If you don't really hit the mark on your first submission, uh, I give one additional submission based on the critique, uh, which would happen in the real world if you were working for a marketing manager or creative director. So we're going to kind of keep the classroom as real and professional as we can. So uh, everyone have a good week. Stay safe, stay well. Uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing your assignments and I'll see you next Tuesday night at 630.